Good day. This is the second part of discussions about business processes and information systems. For the second part, we will begin with enterprise applications. These applications are for the overall company as a whole, as said in part one. So we have here the enterprise systems or enterprise resource planning systems. You have ERPs. We have also the supply chain management systems customer relationship management and knowledge management. So they will be discussed exhaustively as we go along the way. Now, we can view systems as traditionally or other. So if we think of traditional, then we would be thinking that there is within the business, meaning the functions or the business processes, each having its uses of information systems. And that is within, or these are within or outside the organization's boundaries. So we also have the customers and vendors, meaning the outside parties or entities who are or that are involved with the systems of our business. Then, or of the client, because we are in the part of the auditors or the practitioners or the management consultants. So functions tend to work in isolation, meaning to say that the business functions and processes are not interrelated. So they are actually existing as separate entities or islands or items. Now we have here for traditional view. So here are our functional departments having the different business functions. Then we have the business processes, which are the transactions that are processed under each. And then we have the different systems for each functional department or business function. So if you think of manufacturing business function, we have the manufacturing business processes, just like the production of products. And we have the manufacturing systems. This is also true for the other business functions, business processes, functional departments and their corresponding systems. Now we have the organizational boundaries. So meaning to say outside the organizations, we have the vendors or the sellers or suppliers. And we have on the another end of the spectrum, we have the customers or the buyers or consumers. So these are the facets of traditional view of the systems. We have also the enterprise systems. This is now on the contemporary portion. So if you can notice, we have the five functional departments, manufacturing, human resources, sales and marketing, finance and accounting. And then in between are the business processes. And we also have the overall or interwide, enterprise-wide business processes. And then we have the enterprise system. So still true, we have the organizational boundaries, both bound for vendors and customers. And their transactions for vendors, for example, if we buy products or purchase products from them, so there would be goods delivered to us or to the client. And then when the client, of course, sells products to the customers, so the customers would be giving value to the company in the form of the payments for the products. So the cash that will be provided to the business. So this is how the enterprise systems would look like. Then benefits of enterprise systems. So we have one organization, we can consider one overall organization. Then there would be more knowledge based in terms of managing the firm. Then in terms of technology unified. So there is unison in terms of the platform, meaning to say that it will be easier for us to evaluate the processes because one, format or template is being used in different branches, for example, or different entities under the same organization. Then business, more efficient in terms of operations, meaning to say we can achieve the objectives with the least amount of resources and the business processes are customer driven. So meaning to say that the business processes are geared towards satisfaction of the customers. Then challenges though, require fundamental changes in the way the business operates, that's true. As opposed to traditional wherein we are viewing each 
business function or functional department as separate, now interlinked or interconnected with the enterprise systems. In terms of technology, complex for the software, and then we need large, big investments of time, money, and expertise. So in the short term, for sure, we need to shell out more. But if we think of the long run or long term perspectives, then we'll be getting more benefits. Then centralized organizational coordination and decision making. So in terms of as to who give or gives the final decision, then that will be done in the main office or head office, so centralized. But then we all know that in today's contemporary world, so it is the best that the decision making should be shared by not only the top heads, but also with certain middle level and lower level managers. So meaning it's a balance of both centralized and decentralized. So that would be constituting the good management. So that's why it says here that for centralized organizational coordination and decision making, this is not the best way for the firms to operate. Then for SEM, that's supply chain management. If we look at the diagram a while ago for enterprise systems, so we have the vendors in which our client would be buying the goods or services from and or then we also have the customers in which our clients would be selling their particular services. So the overall linkage in buying, making, and moving a product, that's called the supply chain management. So from the vendor to our client to the customer. So this integrates supplier, manufacturer, distributor, and customer logistics time. And this would reduce time consumed in buying the products, producing, and selling minimizes also the redundant efforts because we'll be able to streamline and iron out certain inconsistencies and issues with respect to the delivery of the products and the acquisition of raw materials needed for production. And we can also minimize costs because if we have partners already identified as well as customers, partners especially for our raw materials and all other items needed for the production, so we can minimize chances for the delays and bottlenecks and mishaps in the production. And overall, we can minimize also the cost of keeping our inventories. This would involve network of organizations and business processes. That's very true because we cannot achieve great SCM without the network. So the relationship between entities or among entities, this would help in procurement of raw materials, transformation into intermediate, meaning to say work in progress or goods in process or work in process and the actual finished products. The limitations. Inefficiencies can waste as much as 25% of companies operating costs, that's true. But I think it will be minimized as a whole. But anyway, that's the limitation. So still there would be inefficiencies and it would constitute operating costs, 25%. Bull whip effect. So if you can notice, if let's say you actually get hold of a whip or a bull, and then you are going to apply it to a certain animal. So if you can notice, if the whip is close at your hand, the curve or the wave is lesser or smaller. But as it goes away, from the person holding the full whip or doing the whipping action, then the wave gets higher. So meaning to say, if you apply small in terms of the whipping or you apply just a little energy, but it creates already the big effect or impact later on or to the other end, especially to the intended recipients. So information about the demand for the product gets distorted as it passes or passes from one entity to next, that's true. And the impact gets bigger and bigger so that if we provide information which are already distorted, the distortion will be multiplied in the next or with the next entity or entities. 
Next would be the supply chain management as what we've said. So the relationship or the connection of our entity. So let's say our entity here is the distributor. Then the distributor, of course, will be getting from the manufacturers and suppliers. Or we can be also here the manufacturers, which would be realistic. So manufacturers would be getting the raw materials, all other items needed for production. So we have such coming from the suppliers. Then the manufacturers would be producing the products to be distributed to distributors and the major retail outlets before going to the customers. And these are the relationships of such they're connected in one line. This would constitute the supply chain management. If you can also notice there are two arrows coming or going from supplier to customer and then customer to supplier. From supplier to customer, we have the capacity, inventory level, delivery schedule, and payment terms because these are the items which are actually analyzed so that the customers would be able to receive the product. So we would be asking, are these entities prior to customer have the capacity for the inventories needed for the delivery to the customer? Then do they have the inventory levels, the delivery schedules, and if they have, what are the payment terms, especially if on account? On the part of the customer to the supplier, so the suppliers would be concerned about the orders from them, the return request in case of defective products or expired products or products not in good conditions. Then repair and service requests, if we now talk about warranties of the products, so what these are, and then also the payments involved. So the customer will be paying to these entities prior to such. So hopefully you get the point of this schedule or diagram. For SEM, this would help in distribution of the finished products to customers. That's very true. So it would minimize also the lead time or the time it takes for the products to be actually delivered to the customers or consumers. This includes reverse logistics. Returned items flow in the reverse direction from the buyer or customer back to the seller or entities prior to such. We have retail outlet to the supplier. So reverse logistics, meaning the reverse of the logistics from our supplier passed on to the customer. So the reverse of that, that's the flow from the customer now back to the supplier and those entities prior, as said a while ago. Then here are the items in how information systems are facilitated in supply chain management. And we make these particular decisions. So we decide when, what to produce, store and move. Also, rapidly communicate orders. So what are the orders being asked by the customers? Then communicate orders based also on information and the track order status. Just like if you are fond of buying products from Lazada or Shopee, so you can actually check as to where your products are or what are the statuses or updates already in terms of who is keeping or what is keeping it in that particular time frame or day. So normally they provide daily updates. Check inventory availability and monitor levels is very important. Otherwise, we cannot deliver to our intended customers on time. We track also the shipments. We plan production based on actual demand. Based on the estimated consumption of our customers, so we plan also our production schedules based on that. Otherwise, we will be buying our products. Then in terms of changes of product designs, we also rapidly communicate product specifications or the actual components and designs of the product should be provided. And we share information about the defect rates so in terms of experiences of any defects, then such should be shared. Then returns also for products that are normally returned because of certain concerns. So we have to investigate also about the reasons for such. Then SEM in terms of system, this would enable firm to generate forecasts 
or estimates or anticipation for a product and to develop sourcing and manufacturing or a manufacturing plan for the product. So if we have this particular system, so we can estimate perhaps how many units would the customer need, and we can also plan ahead as to their respective needs or demand. Then execution system would be showing the flow of products through the distribution centers and warehouses. So if you can recall from supplier, we have the manufacturer. Then after that, we now have the distributors. So distribution or distributors then after that, we have the retail outlets and the customers. Next would be collaborative commerce. This is where entities would be putting their efforts into one product. So for example, if you are going to do a vacation trip, then it is already a package of the hotel, which is one business, the airline ticket, which is another business, the rent a car business, for example, and so much more. So that's collaborative commerce. You are paying one price for multiple of products bundled into one. And normally these multiple organizations would use digital technologies or online environment. So collaboratively design, develop, build, move, and manage products. This would increase efficiency. That's very true because if you just sell the products one by one, so that would take much time and could be ineffective and inefficient. But if we are going to combine them, so just one transaction and all are sold. So this would increase efficiency. We can minimize the consumption of resources and reduce product design life cycles, minimize excess inventory. So we can plan our inventories based on demand. And as said, we can forecast demand and we can keep our partners and customers informed of the developments of the respective projects or business. Then we can see here a collaborative commerce diagram. We have the firm extranet or private network. We have here the entity, which are shared to different partners or entities outside the organization. We have the suppliers. For example, their concerns would be on the replenishment of their supplies so that they can provide to the company the needed supplies for the goods and also the price schedules in cases that there would be changes of such, as well as these other entities. So we have the engineers for the design documents, for the manufacturing, the bills of material, the list of materials needed, the demand forecasts of the expected sales of product, then order status. For sales and marketing, the coordination of marketing efforts or campaigns or advertising or advertisement. Then for customers, their orders, and in cases, if they have requests for product modification. Next would be for industrial networks, especially private, they normally are web enabled. So they're into technology and we can communicate also via technology. This link systems of multiple firms in an industry and coordinate trans organizational business processes. The processes would involve various or different organizations. For CRM, this is how we deal our customers. And it's very important also to use technology in this case because we can provide the necessary services like on time, even with a simple messaging like Gmail or online messaging. But of course, if we're now talking about a business, normally they have their own even systems like for Outlook in terms of sending emails and responding to emails. So managers always used by firms to deal with existing and potential new customers. Then again, usage of technology for the business as well as the discipline, which is very important, BNT discipline. Then uses information system to coordinate entire business processes of a firm. Well, for the customers, they are actually at the end of the supply chain management line. So in that case, all are coordinated prior to the giving of the products to the customers, as well as providing to them what they need or what specific items that they have to get, especially the information to answer or cater for their needs. This would provide, or this provides end-to-end -end customer care. 
and there is technology that can really spot the need immediately, of course, with certain verification items because we cannot just like entertain any customer. There should be some sort of identifying or knowing this particular customer. This would provide or provides a new way or view of customer across the company. Like one way of identifying and looking that customer. Consolidates customer data from multiple sources and provides analytical tools for answering questions. Even if the customers could be coming from different demographics or profiles, we can analyze them properly with the proper tools and we can answer their concerns or queries immediately. Then this is an example of CRM as being shown in a diagram. So we have sales, marketing, and customer service. These are the three areas concerned in terms of actual sales and then the campaign efforts, advertisement for the products, and now dealing with the customers. So we can have the unified view, as said, consistent message. So if we are going to provide answers to their concerns, we can answer them consistently, unless if the concerns are very unique or specific. So we can also be changing the way that we deal such things or somebody will have to answer it differently. Then end to end, so from start to finish, we should assist the customer. And this would ensure or ensue long-term customer relationships and would be able to spot or identify now the best customers. All right, so thank you very much for listening. Hope to see you in the next videos. Thank you and God bless us all.